The Mystery of Goliath Head Skull 1 Samuel 17 verse 4 And there went out a champion out of the camp of the Philistines, named Goliath, of Gath, whose height was six cubits and a span. A cubit was eighteen inches in Hebrew and twenty-four in Egyptian, so Goliath was over ten feet tall. David was a young boy and not believed to have been a large man in stature. David didn't wear Saul's armor because it didn't fit, he used only his slingshot with a small stone to take down the mighty giant, for God was with him. Most of us assume the stone killed Goliath, but there are some who believe Goliath may have only been stunned and this was the reason David took the sword and cut Goliath's head off thinking he might wake up. Interesting, but David may have had another reason. In 1 Samuel 17 verse 54 there is something unusual that happens after Goliath was slain. And David took the head of the Philistine and brought it to Jerusalem, but he put his armor in his tent. Now the battle between David and Goliath took place in the valley of Calah, which was almost twenty miles from Jerusalem. My question is, why did David drag Goliath's head all those miles to Jerusalem? It would be morbid thinking David would be taking Goliath's head to have it stuffed as a souvenir, besides, I don't think they did that back then. I mean, what do you do with a giant head? Putting it on display would be yucky, not to mention the smell and there were hygiene laws God gave the Israelites too, which would make them unclean handling dead things. So, what's up with this? Why and where was David taking this giant's head to Jerusalem? Surely, he had a reason. We know that David was a man after God's heart, so was he doing something in the natural, which was significant in the spirit? A prophetic act of some sort? I wonder? If David is God's man, then Goliath is surely Satan's man. David is fighting to protect Israel, while Goliath is trying to destroy Israel, God's family. David's lineage is Ruth and Goliath, his lineage is from Orpha, who produced the race of giants. Two women, two sisters, two enemies, two nations, the nation of Israel and the nation of Philistia. When David fought Goliath, it was a family feud. The rabbis identify the Orpah mentioned in the book of Ruth with the Rapha, or Harapha, the mother of the four warriors of Gath who appear in 2 Samuel 22 and the Goliath from Gath, Harapha's son with the Goliath who fought David in 1 Samuel 17. Goliath represented evil and was trying to wipe out God's family, the lineage where Jesus was to come from. Who wanted that? Satan. Goliath was the seed of the serpent. So, David took Goliath's head to Jerusalem, but what did he do with it and where did he put it? What would you call or name the place where Goliath's head would be put? Think about that and let me bring a bit more information in to get a deeper look at the death of Goliath and why God loved David so much. When Jesus was crucified, Matthew, Mark, Luke and John all shared his story. They spoke about Jesus being crucified on a hill called Calvary, in Hebrew the word Calvary is Golgotha, and it is called, the Hill of the Skull. The question about why the hill was called, the Hill of the Skull, has been sought after for centuries. The obvious would be because you can almost see a skull face in the rocks, but is that the only reason possible or could there be more? Origen said it was believed this is where Adam's skull was buried by the early church fathers. Jewish tradition believed Noah got on the ark and took the body-slash-skull of Adam with them and after the flood Shem, Melchizedek, came here and buried Adam's skull somewhere in Jerusalem. Goliath, 
being part human and angelic was a mutation of what God created. He represented the seed of the serpent, the enemies of Israel and the epitome of the evil that Satan tried to produce on the earth through offspring of fallen angels and the daughters of men. Genesis 4 verse 6 So, what does the Bible say about the seed of the serpent? Genesis 3 verse 15 God's prophetic words And I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed, it shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. When Jesus was crucified, think about him being crucified on the hill of Golgotha. Think about him being on the hill of the skull, head, of Goliath, the seed of the serpent, Satan. If Goliath's skull, his head, was slash is buried somewhere underneath the place of the cross of Jesus and spiritually represented the seed of the serpent, the powers of the enemy that brought corruption and even the flood judgment on the earth, are you getting this? Well, think on this. When the blood of Jesus came out of his body, and it poured down into the soil of that hill called Golgotha. If Goliath's head was buried there, it fulfilled Genesis 3 verse 15. The Hebrew name for a race of giants that existed is Rephaim, which means, the giants have no resurrection. Rephaim is used to comprehend all the gigantic races of the Canaanites, of whom there were several families. There were Rephaim beyond Jordan, at Ashtaroth Karnaim, in the time of Abraham, Genesis 14 verse 5, also some in the time of Moses. O.G. king of Bashan was of the Rephaim. In the time of Joshua, some of their descendants dwelt in the land of Canaan, Joshua 12 verse 4 17, 15, and we hear of them in David's time in the city of Gath, 1 Chronicles 20 verses 4 to 6. The giant Goliath and others were the remains of the Rephaim or of the kindred family of Anakim. Their magnitude and strength are often spoken of in Scripture. They appear to have excelled in violence and crime, and hence are monuments of divine justice. The Valley of the Rephaim, or Giants, was famous in Joshua's time. Joshua 15 verses 8, 17 verses 15, 18 verse 16, and in the time of David, who here defeated the Philistines, 2 Samuel 5 verses 18 and 22, 1 Chronicles 11 verse 6, 14, colon 9. Why is it so important to know the giants have no resurrection? Because, once giants died, their human side went back to dust, but their spiritual, angelic, side, became the evil spirits that roam the earth, which men have had to deal with all these years. So, no resurrection, and they are going to be judged, for the Bible says. Know ye not that we shall judge angels? How much more things that pertain to this life? 1 Corinthians 6 verse 3 We will judge angels one day, principalities, powers, rulers of darkness, wicked spirits in heavenly places. David had begun one of his divine assignments to finish the cleanup that Joshua started when he entered the promised land. His, David's, mighty men cleaned up Goliath's brothers. The remnants of the giant tribes. Those giants, the attempt to genetically corrupt human seed that Satan meant to thwart the birth of Messiah. David buried the head on a small mountain next to the city, Golgotha, the place of the skull. Whose skull? And which prophecy? Genesis 3 verse 15 He shall bruise your head. The cross on that hill crushed Satan's head. Another scripture fulfilled. Hallelujah! The enemy was under his feet, and the enemy is under our feet. Time to jump, shout, dance, and do the stomp.